So the Isky Roadster, checking in on it, it's starting to look like quite a car here. That's the idea. It's mocked up, and I mean as rude and crude as you can get. One of the things that Ed did was he stretched the wheelbase, which I talked about that in the other video. I'm not really a fan of it, and we're not building a recreation of Ed's car. We're building a tribute to Ed's car. So we want the same essence, but we don't have to do everything exactly like Ed did. So here's where we're at. I, I cleaned the old tires and wheels and armor all of them. I wanted to look fairly cool. What I've done is I've marked it on the ground, the front of my jack wheel, 99, 102, and 105 inches. Ed's is 105. I've got the front wheel positioned from the firewall, the same place Ed's was. So that's a given. I'm not gonna change that. The back back here, I'm kind of liking the shorter wheelbase better. Traditionally, a T-bucket was a little short thing. You know, it's like the Ivo T and Norm Grabowski's T. They were very short wheelbase. They were just little hot rods. Ed's is more like a, like a, I don't know if you, I guess he built it for speed, right. you know, for the lakes. He made it long, which is good, but we're trying to do a balance of aesthetics and modern times as well as what Ed did and speed. So it's not really going to be right. just a race car. Pulling the iconic parts of it and then putting your twist a little bit on it. So right there you have it where it's in the shortest position, which is 99 inch wheelbase. Yeah. And then six inches shorter than Ed's. Think about that. Six inches, you know, it's, a, it's considerably longer. So shorter. Shorter than Ed's. So go ahead and pull it back. So we have this we have choices, so we can go 99, 102, which would be here. Yep, that's 102. That okay. would be in between what I think it should be, or I'm kind of leaning for, and what Ed's was. Okay, and then go to the Ed's position. Right, one of my one of my reasons that I don't aesthetically like the way Ed's looks, I'm gonna show you right now. It okay. bothered me when I first saw it, this car, but I, you know I. I get it, consideration that it was a long time ago. There was there wasn't popular tea buckets. Ed did it and basically, you know, designed the tea bucket. So that's where Ed's is now. It may not show in the camera because I took pictures of all three and I think it looks good any way I do it. But if you stand back, that's really a long wheelbase, 105 inches. It looks a little bit wrong to me. It's very stretched. Okay, so come around this way. Okay. The thing that bothers me when I got up to the museum and saw was look, the back tire is sticking completely behind the back of the car. Come over this way a little. See, you actually see wheel sticking out past the car. Right. You've got, I think actually, I need to remeasure that. I think you see a little more of Ed's wheel. It may be back even another inch. I may have You can see it just a rim bit. and spokes. Like it's... So the... But everything's behind the car. Some would say, yeah, but that's what makes it cool. Maybe it is. You know, if that's what makes it cool, I'm missing it. You know, I probably should back up and rethink. It is cool, and I may go that way, but I'm having just a little bit of problems with that long of a wheelbase it kind of takes away the tea bucket body i think in you, the middle of the car i was gonna say it looks kind of floaty like it kind of takes away from the turtle deck you don't really see the because you're hiding the back of it totally there yeah maybe it's just uh, it just doesn't look like where it should be i mean it's just kind of that simple right so, anyway that's the look let's go back forward to the in between Okay, I'm gonna stand here so you can see it move. So there's there's Ed. Here's in between. Take that in for a minute. I'm just not a fan of the in between. I don't like it so much. I don't think the thing I don't like is the round and then it like bubbles back to a round. Like it's something about that. Maybe it's not that big a deal. I don't have a problem with that. The tire still sticks out past the car. 
which isn't, you know, that's not the big deal. That's not, so, you know, any tea bucket, Tommy, Ivo, the tire was always the back of the car, but they usually had a very short truck turtle deck, which was usually 12 inches or so, or a, a beer keg back there or something for a gas tank. So the tire was always the rear of the car. What we're doing by putting it at the back, we're making it the rear of the car, but we've got a three foot long turtle deck sticking out. Right. So it kind of just looks a little unbalanced to me. This is the option right here. Well, they're all options. So that would be 99 inches. That kind of gets it a little more modern tea bucket style. And still is stretched back further than most would do. Um, that's still probably, I'm thinking that that's probably three or four inches longer than what a traditional tea bucket with a short uh, truck bed would be. So that's still stretched. It's right. 99 inches. I kind of like that look, but I don't want to take away from Ed's too much. So what I'm going to do is send Nolan pictures and leave it in his lap. I think you should send it to him and not give him too much context and just say, which do you like better? Yeah, and then when he picks the one that I don't like, then I can give him context and say, why would you do that? That's a good idea. Then we can sway him. Okay. And it'll be his idea at that point. And that's exactly what he'll do. That's what I say. I, that's, I like that idea. <laughs> if, in any way, it's going to look good. But we can't move the front wheel. We can move the back wheel. I'm just going to have to move it back and forth a few more times and figure out what really looks best. You're kind of starting to see what it's going to look like. And it's going to look good. And because... Once I establish that wheelbase, it totally dictates what I do right here. This is the next piece. I've got to start building frame rail. That's just the front and rear cross member, which have to be highly altered, and some tubing. There's no links or widths or anything actually established there, but it'll be Z'd in the rear. It's gonna come up behind the body and kick back with that cross member radically narrowed to fit in that little turtle deck, and then you know that's going to be determined and i got to decide this is all stuff i got to do today on edge it's turned around the rear end is actually behind that cross member typically it's under the middle of it the spring was on top of the axle tubes uh -huh. which is right in that cross member so i've got to decide we're not going to use a spring we're going to use coil over so i can do whatever i want one thing i got to consider is if i turn it around i move it forward cross member is going to be so far forward it's going to be hard to get a gas tank in there's no room. Uh, so yeah. if I move it all the way back, the cross member all the way back, then I've got way more room in the front, but it's back behind the axle. It looks kind of weird. The coilovers would be in front of the cross member, and I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather have the coilovers behind the cross member and behind the rear axle, not in front. So I'm you got a lot of figuring. Weighing all this stuff out, I got to figure it out, but. First thing is to establish it based on aesthetics. Aesthetics and then figure the rest out. Practicality. Yeah. I can always pull a trailer with the gas tank in it. got a little bit of a unique situation with this rear suspension because you know Ed's was so different at the time his wheelbase is long and we've decided to keep the wheelbase long on this and the problem with that if you want to come over here there's actually lots of problems but to put it like Ed's was you can see the center of the rear end is almost at the back of the car it's the there's not much room below the trunk opening to get to anything. The differential is gonna be right here, the tubes. So we're using a quick change, which you can see over there has the big bump out of the back. So it's gonna be right at the rear of the car, maybe even sticking out just a little bit. That's something that I haven't really measured out yet, but I'll deal with it. But by putting the rear end so far back, you can't, we're gonna use this Model A cross member. I'm gonna do some cutting on it. I think Ed's was 
an Essex cross member. It's almost the same, but a little different. So I'm gonna cut that one up to fit and it will look very much or identical to Ed's. But what Ed did was he used radius rods off of something. I couldn't get under and see it close enough. It could have been a T model. It could have been the Essex. I'm just not sure. But typically the radius rods go all the way out here. They go out to the brake drums on the rear end of a Model A or 37 Ford, whatever. The brackets are made on the, the axle tubes and they're very widespread and they go up close under the, the torque tube, the drive shaft, and they pivot off of a ball so the rear end can do like this. Well, typically hot rodders split those bones and Ed did that as well, but they, we're still gonna angle them in and we're gonna put them next to the drive shaft. This will be an open drive shaft instead of a, a tube, but it'll be up there. So Ed's were very, very close. He moved them from way out there. He moved them in to the trunk area and he moved them in probably 14 or 16 inches. So instead of the, the wishbones being way back here, the, this wide, sticking out of the car would have looked really hideous. He moved them in to the trunk area and split them so they're running kind of like this, closer at the front, wider at the back, but you know, probably 24 inches apart back here. So what I've got to do is I'm using a different rear end, even though it's still a banjo style rear end, but it's a quick change. We're just upgrading to what we like now, but instead of putting a nine inch or some standard type rear end in we're staying with the quick change which will be very much like his except his was not a quick change and what i'm doing instead of using wishbones which i don't have i don't want to search for and there's no need to because we, we need a little more strength the wishbone was just a tube this is the front wishbone so in ed's case you can see here he i've got pictures of all this i just don't have exact measurements Ed welded these under the rear end and split them about like that right there, I would say. Well, you know, putting the kind of horsepower we're putting at 100 horsepower, that's acceptable. At 450, 500 horsepower, that would not be very smart to have that little tube. And I think Ed's were even smaller than that. That's her front wishbone off of 37 Ford. I think his were very small wishbones. So what we're doing is using the Speedway ladder bar kit. It's almost the same, like the rest of this car is going to be only different, but it does very much mimic what Ed had. And this is all probably going to fall here, but I'm just now at this planning stage. Really. So you can see it tapers in. I will just determine the the spread at the back, which will determine the spread at the front. It'll be a little bit closer. Let's kind of move over here. It'll probably be more like this. And this will mount up. The drive shaft will run down through here, but it'll mount up close to the back of the transmission, which is what Ed's did. So that's all very close. The problem traditionally, nowadays anyway, and forever, not in 1938 when Ed did his, the springs, we're gonna use coilovers instead of a buggy spring. There's just no reason for us to get that authentic. And it had tube shocks. And we're gonna use these as tube shocks, but they're gonna have the springs on them. I'm still gonna use the cross member in the same place as Ed's. But with what Ed did was he put, and he, had, he didn't have all this big housing. So it presents a little bit of a unique problem. Ed's shocks ran straight up and down and they fit inside that trunk, which is very small. So I'm figuring about 24 inches apart, center to center on these shocks at the top. And from Speedway, we got these, the, the, the ladder bar kit came with brackets. It's already spread like it's supposed to be. Everything's really cool. It saves me a lot of work, but you put the shocks behind the rear end, like this one, typically. This is the way almost all cars with ladder bars is built and has been for many, many years. 
here's the problem. If I put the shocks behind, and even if I put the cross member over the rear end, which is how it, it was, that's where the cross member set in a Model A or 37 Ford, what have you. So I could do that and build tubes off of here to run the shocks. It would be sitting up higher like this. That the problem is, it's so close to the back of the car, the shocks would, would not fit back there because the turtle deck's only this tall. And it would be under the trunk lid and the shocks would be right in your face at the back of the car. We don't want to see the shocks. You didn't see edge shocks. He didn't have coilovers and I want it to be more like his. So Ed flipped the rear end around or the tubes, not the rear end. He flipped the tubes. He took the right tube, put it on the left and vice versa. And that put everything forward instead of the cross member being here and the stuff being behind it. He's his cross member is up here. So that moves the cross member more in the center of the trunk. So you've got your trunk here and you've got room still in the front for a gas tank. But look, that's a mess. I can't put shocks back there and then put the cross member up there, but I don't want to do that. So what I got to do is mount the shocks here, which is what it did. Basically it's a little bit different because of the whole thing's different, but I'm going to mount it here. I'm going to make stands off of this cross member and put a shock mount here. So it'll be mounted like this. Well, somewhere in here, about like that. And it will be in front of the differential. The, what I'm facing right now is you want the shocks standing like I am in the car. You want the shocks to be able to do this, not this. So if you see how this shock will move like this, but it won't move front to back. Well, you go on a driveway or whatever, you the rear end twist this way. You want the shock to be able to pivot like that. So I can't use the mount that this one is on, which is what you would normally use building a street rod today or a hot rod. What I have to do is make a mount for the lower coilover mount down here. I don't want to hang it down to the point where you see the coilover because we don't want to advertise that it's a coil over. So what I'm going to do is come off of this bottom, this bottom uh, ladder bar bolt. I keep wanting to say radius rods. I get there's so much. We, we build four links. I rarely do ladder bars anymore. We've done it forever, but you don't do it much anymore. So off of that bottom ladder bar bolt, and you know you could put a longer bolt and a spacer and all that and put the shock right there wouldn't be too big a deal i'd have to lean it forward and the shock would not pivot this way it would pivot this way so when you go in a driveway and you twist the car you would just be squeezing the bushing it would just be twisting the bushing. so instead of doing that what i'm going to do i made a little paper pattern this shock will mount in here, just like that. I'm not gonna show it better. This square that I've drawn in here represents a bolt hole. That will be the lower bolt. This will be billet aluminum, an inch and a quarter thick, and it will be drilled and tapped, and that lower bolt will go screw into here. So this will screw onto that lower four bar, or, or uh, whatever I'm trying to say, ladder bar, bolt and then there'll be a hole going through here that this shock will mount in like this so this allows it to twist this way and it will go right here instead of that nut we'll do away with the nut and that washer and this billet aluminum piece will go right here well, that gives me my mount. It moves me far enough out and it moves it far enough in. So everything will work kind of like Ed's. It'll be like, it'll be kind of more up and down about like that. So the shocks may angle in a little bit at the top. I think Ed's were straight. 
I've looked at pictures, and it doesn't matter. It, it really makes no difference at all. But I'm going to make two of these. I could fire up the CNC over there and spend a lot of time drawing, get Alex to come out and draw. I really don't enjoy drawing, and I'm not good at it. Or I can just cut this out on the bandsaw. This is more for me. It's about fabricating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm still going to use a mill, but you see, I've got it pretty much just square cuts. It's just very basic. Nobody's going to see it. It's got to be functional. I've got this half inch wide because I want strength. It's going to be an inch and a half tall. So what I'm going to do is I've got some two by eight aluminum. I wish I had something closer to the right size, but I'm cutting two pieces. I'm cutting one piece three inches, which will be like this, and then I'll turn it over and I'll do another one here. So I'm gonna cut a block off. I'm gonna hand bandsaw it over here on my big bandsaw, make two blocks out of it, and then I'll take it over to the mill. Well, actually, I'll, I'll cut this notch out on the bandsaw, because that, that saw's got big teeth. It'll cut like wood. I'll cut this notch out, I'll cut some angles on it, then I'll take it to the mill and I'll face everything and make it nice and square drill it, tap it, cut it down from two inches to inch and a half. And I'm gonna make two of these brackets, drill them here for the lower bolt. And this is gonna be our new shock mount. This is just to make things work because that rear end scoot is so far back. Everything is so much bigger than what Ed used. Instead of a coil over that big, he used the shock that big and he used a spring, a buggy spring over it. Well, I want that look when you look in the trunk, but you won't know that there's not a spring in there because you're looking straight down on it and you can't really tell. I'm gonna have ladder bars, but that's okay because the whole car is just a little bit different. It's gotta be a little bit stronger, a little more high performance. The rear end's a bigger rear end. That's the champ style quick change. Ed's was a Model A style rear end, which would have been like what we call a V8 quick change. It's a much smaller ring gear. So the rear end's the same, just different, just bigger and stronger. Ladder bars are bigger and stronger. Transmission's bigger, stronger, motor, more horsepower. So we're trying to stay true to the design, but make it stronger. We just have to make everything stronger and a little bit bigger, but still look like it. Okay, so last we talked, I was explaining how the shocks are gonna to have to be in front of the rear axle instead of behind. So here's the way the ladder bars come from Speedway and anybody else, you typically put the shock behind the housing. That's just normal way of doing things. In this case, because of the axle scooted so far back, I'm having to put the shock in front of the housing. Same thing Ed did. Here's what I've done. You can see this is the repaired one or the fixed one. This is the, the Speedway style one. So what I've done is I've made a bracket of shock mounts. It's not pretty, it's not fancy. It's just a basic shock mount. So it goes in that lower bolt and the shock goes into the groove. Actually, that's not right. Turn it the right way. It goes like this, there's the threaded hole shock goes in and now the shock can sit in front of the housing instead of behind. So you put it together. I haven't done this yet. So now that's where we want it. So that's about where the ladder bar will weld to the housing and that's about where the shock will sit. Now I was shooting for 
about 24 inch spread from the center line of the car or the center of the rear axle. So this can move and that's what I'll do to move it, but I'll probably move it out just a little bit. I want the top mounts about 12 inches. So pretty close to that right there. That gives me plenty of clearance from the rear end and from the ladder bar and everywhere. So the shock will sit in front. That's kind of where Ed sits. So we're, we're back to getting something now. Just had to stop and do that. So this is where the cross member is gonna sit. And I will make a, just like Ed, I'll make a stand with a tube that'll support that shock. You'd think, why can't you go back here? And I can, and I might, but to be like Ed's, I would be in front. So I'm gonna look that over and decide which way I wanna go. So both ladder bars are mocked up on the rear end and spread out left to right like they should be. That gives my shock distance what I want it to be based on the turtle deck, the limited room we have in there. So pretty much the, the turtle deck will be here. All this will stick out, but it'll be nice and clean looking like yeah, it's just a rear end tube sticking out. I've got the spring on this side and off of this side just so I can show you the ride height. I've got part of this compressed. I've got this shock compressed half of the distance. So we got two inches of down travel, two inches of up travel. And that puts me eight inches from the top of the tube to the center of the shock bolt. So make it as much like as as possible. And one of the issues that we just discovered Ed didn't have a quick change, like I've said over and over. So Ed's, the back of Ed's car and his, his ring gear is much smaller. So this diameter here on this ring gear is much larger. The back of Ed's car is right about there. So we decided, we discovered to have the wheelbase that Ed's car has, this is gonna be sticking out of the back of the car. You know, is, is that bad? I don't know. I kind of like the idea of it sticking out, but I'm going to have to notch the body. After I've made this surround just similar to Ed's. It, it looks like Ed's, but it, I've rounded the corners off instead of them being square like Ed's were. But if we leave the wheelbase back like we've been discussing to make it look like his, I'm going to have to put a big notch in here. The, the quick change is going to stick out right here. It's going to be sticking way out of the back of the car. It'll look pretty cool. I've never seen it. I think it would look good, but it's not Ed's. Ed had a single tail light and a license plate right here, the old California long, narrow license plate. So the question now becomes, do we want it to look like Ed's back here, or do we want it to look like Ed's over there, you know, from the side view? If we keep his wheelbase, we're gonna have a rear end sticking out. If we shorten the wheelbase, it's gonna look a little different, but we're not gonna have a rear end sticking out. We can have the license plate and the tail light. So after looking things over, measuring, talking to Nolan, of course he leaves it up to me, but I wanna include him. We've decided to shorten the wheelbase four inches over heads. That will keep the third member, or the, the quick change rather, up inside. The cool part about that is it'll be up in the car. Oh, this is two inches, I'm gonna have to shorten this down. But the bolts will be right here. So the third member, or the quick change will be up inside the car and down here, but inside the car. So we can still do a tail light, we can still do a license plate. The cross member, I cut the Model A cross member to the right width and I've got it mocked up in here. His cross member is back because his wheelbase is longer. 
So he's got a little bit more room up here for a gas tank. We just found a gas tank that will fit in here and it's nine and a half gallons stainless steel. It's round, it looks really cool. It should just fit right in there. The only drawback is you can't take it in and out. It's gonna be, the car is gonna be set down over the gas tank and it's gonna be in there where you'll have to raise the body to get it out. I'm pretty sure you do that on Ed's anyway. His is an oval shaped gas tank and it's just old black steel. So the stainless gas tank with the filler neck right here is going to look really right for the car. It looks aircraftish, And the cross member should be pretty close to where it's sitting here. And the shocks will be behind. And the whole reason for that, I could put the cross member behind the shocks, which would be more standard. But the way I've got to come off of the frame, off of the cross member, with a piece of frame is going to be here. I've got to go down to about the top of that sawhorse with an angle like that and then take off forward with the frame rails so the frame won't be actually z like you normally do it's going to just be part of the z it's going to have the lower frame rails or the main frame rails it's going to come up like this kind of like that and the cross member will be sitting here where this tape measure is so that's kind of what i got to do right here in fact that's pretty that's pretty darn accurate to the way it's going to look. And then the, the frame of the, the, the frame that I'm going to build is actually going to be under the car. It's not going to be channeled like a lot of T buckets are. It's going to hang below the car, which is good because that gives you more interior room. It makes for a much comfortable ride. You don't look like Herman Munster sitting in it. That's one of the problem with a traditional T bucket where they channel the body over the frame. You're sitting up so high. so. We're going to do just what he did, and he has he had a frame covers built that he covered the his frame was an Essex frame, so it wasn't pretty. He made covers that are below the body and inside. There, his frame rails set in five inches. I don't know that ours are going to set in that far, but we may not even have to have covers because our frame's going to look nice. But that's what happens. We're going to set the frame rails below. It's going to Z up to that cross member. And if I put the shocks, if I move the cross member back, which I'd like to do, but if I did that, shocks would be in front and then the frame rails would run right into the shocks. There's just no way to do it. So it's going to end up being, we're facing the same sort of challenges that Ed did. We're having to shove all this stuff in this very small compartment and it kind of, there's only one way to do it. Ed was able to move it back because his little bitty, model a third member and no quick change but we want that quick change so we've got to make some compromises so it's going to work out but that's where we're at right now this getting the getting all this stuff figured out getting the shocks moved forward getting the ladder bar spacing right getting the cross member cut down is allowing me to get my basic rear measurements and everything will come off of that and go forward the front cape that's never an issue it's out there, all it's doing is holding the grill shell up. So the quick change that we got from David Freiberger is perfect, except the bolt circle on the wheels. The quick change setup for four and a half inch, which is late Ford. The wheels are early Ford, they're five and a half inch. So there's an inch difference. So four and a half inch on the rear end, five and a half inch on the wheels. So I've got this, thing I've had for ever it shows the bolt circles you can check and I use it on occasion to lay on an axle and I'll use a transfer punch and just center punch those holes that I need and I'll drill them on my drill press well the hole in the center of this is not as big as what the axles are on David's rear end so instead of cutting this up or just guessing or whatever measuring I'm making one similar to it out of just a thin piece of scrap aluminum. I'm just gonna cut the hole out in the center the size of David's axles. And I'm gonna drill a small hole in here that I can use a transfer punch and cut the outer ring. So it's just a template and I can center punch my axle. There's room on the axle to actually do it. There isn't gonna be much left on the edge, just an eighth of an inch, but that's fine. And we'll convert those axles to five and a half inch bolt circle instead of a four and a half inch. So here's a finished product. It's just a piece of 
125 plate. I didn't want to waste a big piece of aluminum because I'm not going to do five and a half inch bolt circles probably ever again. But what I did was I just used the mill, did 72 degrees around 360. That's five bolt circles or five bolts in a circle, 72 degrees apart each. I made the hole the same size as the axle. So fits nice and snug. What I do next is I've got just a little space here. So with this, I just set it kind of in the center of that, about like that, and then clamp it. And I'm going to hope it stays right there. So these are transfer punches that are exactly right in diameter. So what I'm gonna do is just punch each one of these. You got a really nice mill with a rotary indexer, five axis, whatever the fancy stuff is, you don't have to do this. But if you just got a drill press, like I do, is the easiest way so you don't have to send it out to have it redone okay so now each one of those holes is center punched right in the center of them take this off and we can like I say you can tell that's perfectly tight this one will be up here just right there's just enough room so that's a originally a four and a half inch bolt circle I'm gonna drill it out now. And I'm gonna drill it by hand. I'm just gonna freehand it on the drill press. I can hang it on a drill press kind of like I'm doing here and drill it. But the important part is making tapping it straight. That's real critical. I have done it by hand, thinking that I'm eyeballing that tap perfectly straight up and down. When you get done, your wheel won't even go on because each stud's aiming just a little bit different it really messes things up for when I convert say this axle to a big 5-8 stud I've got this that I made for the axles that we use it won't work on this one the register here is a little different but I can use this as a drill guide and then I can run it as a tap and I can tap and drill the existing half inch studs out for 5-8 studs so that's a nice thick piece. It holds the tap perfectly straight. But for a quickie, I just took a piece of scrap. You can see it's got holes drilled in it. And I machined both sides quickly just so I'd have a good flat spot and drilled a half inch hole right down the middle of it. And the tap actually threads into it. It's, I used a, a half inch mill bit instead of a drill bit. So it was very accurate. But when I drill this, I'll clamp this on here and it will hold that tap perfectly parallel with the face of this axle. And my bolts will be perfectly straight up and down, which I've already done one. So you can see the old four and a half inch bolt circle. Now we're a five and a half inch, just barely fit. So this is what we're getting ready to do on this one. With the pilot bit. Okay, so there's the five pilot holes drilled. And this isn't as critical because I'm going to use my block to guide the tap. It wiggles around a little bit, but I can pretty much hold it where it needs to be. So all five holes are drilled for the half inch tap, 2964, so I believe. So what I'm going to do now is set this tap just a little bit through to locate in the hole, clamp this guide, and I'm gonna tap. And that's got the tap held straight up and down both directions. And I just move on to the next one. And I'm assured just by drilling a simple plate of a block of aluminum 
I'm assured that that hole is perfectly straight up and down. Otherwise, if you got five of them that are wandering off just a little bit, it can be really tough to put a wheel on. You end up doing some stuff you don't want to do. So you need to make sure that they're straight. And that's what we're doing here. It's not exactly backyard engineering because I do have a mill that I was able to do this in. Everybody won't have a mill. But if you got a good drill press, you can do the same thing. It won't be quite as accurate, but it'll work better than doing it by hand, I assure you. So all the holes are tapped. I'm gonna put up these washers look kind of funky. Not really what I would do, but they came with the studs from the rear end with the rear end. So now that they're all tapped, I know they're straight. I'm gonna start each one of them, run it in, and put Loctite on them just to be safe. I'm only putting it up here because I don't want Loctite on the threads all the way out. And I'm not just gonna bear down on this. Give it a few cranks. A few Ugga Duggas. For the next pair. So, perfect. Strong, nice looking studs. We'll check it on this wheel. Perfect. Now we have five and a half inch bolt circle. And I'm going to put five brand new lug nuts on it. Because I have them. And put it back in the rear end. And tomorrow I can tack weld my ladder bar brackets on, make my upper shock mounts for the cross member that I cut today. Now that's one more worry or thing that I had to think about because until today I didn't know for sure that they Axles had enough room to drill. The option then would have been new axles, but that's perfect. So now we're five and a half inch, the width's just right. I just need to tack the ladder bars on and get that cross member set up there with the upper shock mouse. Then I can start building the frame. So this is Thursday. I'll get all that done tomorrow. I should get this up in the car with the back tires on it so I can just look at it, make sure everything's kosher before I actually weld everything up and start building the frame. So finally, gonna build a frame. So this is where we stand right now. Kind of a, a mess, so to speak, because you've got so many things to consider. You've got pinion angle to consider. You've got the front spread to make it right with the rear spread. You have the height of the front points here. Where are they gonna fall in your frame in relation to cross members, what have you? What do you want them to do up here? Do you want them below the main rails? like so many are. Do you want them up inside the main rails? I kind of want them inside the main rails because I don't want to see them. As you didn't see Ed's, I don't really want to see these. So how do you know your front spread compared to your rear spread? Because when you're at an angle, you could have it this way, this way, you know, too much in, too much out. So it's kind of hard or could be kind of hard. It's really not when you have this you have a laser. I like to use my laser. I don't use it a lot, but stuff like this, it really pays. So I figured my rear spread at 24 inches, what I did was the, the 
skirt that I made to go under the turtle deck to look like Ed's is 31 and a half inches wide inside to inside. So from this bolt here on the upper ladder bar to the bolt on the other ladder bar is have, will have about an inch for that to go up inside of that skirt. So that's perfect. That's, that's at a 24 inch spread on the brackets. Now I need to make sure I tacked them at the back on the housing. I've got my pinion angle pointing straight out, which runs just about between these height wise in the center of these heim joints at the front. So as I raise my pinion angle to aim into my transmission that'll be aiming down, it should run these front points right up inside of my two by four frame that I'm gonna build. And if not, I have adjustment here. I can move it a lot based on those rear adjusters. So I got everything kind of set neutral. But still, to get this up here spread and to put tack welds on all my brackets so nothing moves, and if I do that and these are wrong, when I get it in the chassis, I'm gonna have problems. That's where the laser comes in. It's so cool, you guys, everybody needs one of these. So you can see the laser's pointing right down the center of the pinion. I mean, it's hitting the, the center hole on the pinion perfect. It's coming back over the top. You can see it back here on top of the rib on the rear end. It's hitting right in the center of that rib on the rear end, just like it should. And then it's also hitting right in the center. And I didn't use this to set my, my cross member, but it happens to be that perfect. It's hitting right in the center of that square hole on the cross member. Now what I do is I come up here and I measure from this nut and I'm measuring off of the points because they both are laying flat on this piece of tubing that I've got. If I measure across, that's six and an eight. Turn it around, six and a sixteenth. So we're that close to being exact. Six and an eighth. So that gets me square. Everything is squared perfectly. The spread on these, couldn't get any better. I mean, lasers don't lie. So what I'm gonna do now is go back there and tack those brackets on and top, bottom, left, right, and have them where those brackets don't move. Then I'll put the tires on, roll the rear end back with the cross member. I've made these braces, just temporary braces that I bolted through one of these bolts in the, in the housing and holding the cross member up at the right height and now that we've got, we can assure ourselves that it's centered, everything's stabilized. I'm gonna roll it into the car before I build a frame out here on a table. I'm gonna roll this into the car, set the car at right height. I'm gonna put the front suspension together, get it set at right height. And then I'm gonna start connecting the dots from this. This is my starting point. Frame rail is gonna come down and run forward. And I'll probably have to spread out. I think it's gonna come it'll probably come down like this and then spread over and the frame rail will separate. I want to get it out further on the body. T-model frame rails were that far apart. I think I'm going to spread it out. I'll know more when I actually get it there. But this will, when these lower shock brackets that I made, they will move. The, these tubes that I made here, they will move. So when I get the rear end position and the front setting properly, with a pinion angle setting properly, I can swing that cross member around at the top. So instead of going like this with my rear end, as I change the angle of the pinion and the front mounting points, I can, if I get it and it's set like this, I can loosen it and set it like this. So all that's thought out where it'll move and that'll get me up in the car. The reason I'm having to do all this is just because that car is so small, you know, I can't really just build a frame and, and stick it up in the car and then make cross members to fit it. There's just no room. All this stuff is very tight. But that's basically what you see is what Ed had, the cross member in front of the rear end, which looks kind of goofy, but it's the same reason I'm doing it. Shocks are in front of the rear axle, which is kind of goofy, but it's the same, he's doing the same thing I'm doing. Uh, there's no way to put these back where it needs to be because the shocks would be, there is, but the shocks would be back under the turtle deck. and. I don't want that. So we're doing just what he did. And then the, I couldn't put the cross member behind because the frame rails have to come off of here. So it's kind of funny, you know, history repeats itself. He did it for a reason. I'm having to do it for the same reason. So we're about to tack weld these brackets on, put the wheels on it, roll it back, 
and then I'll set it up on stands and get it where I think it's gonna be. We'll set the body over it, set the body at the right height that we want, and then I'll set the front end under it and we can start connecting the dots. Very cool. Man, that's all so perfect. It just looks perfect. Look at the quick change back there. It's so bitchin'. Well, that looks good from the back. It looks perfect. Super impressed. drugs Henry Ford was on. But he makes this big center cap. It's probably a five and a half inch opening and then makes the lugs pattern five and a half inch. You can't get a, a spanner wrench or anything that, you know, to get the lug nuts off. You can't get it in there. You have to run it at an angle because it hits the outer part of the wheel. Very odd deal. Alright, at this point the work started and the talking stopped. So I'm gonna voice over for dad here. Sorry, it's not him. So basically they took the body off, pulled the skirt off, and cut the notches for where the axle tubes go. Um, they put it back on to check it, then they'll pull it back off in just a second. Double check measurements, cut a couple more pieces off so it fits, and then get ready to make a flange that goes around that opening where the axle tube is. So you can see here, he's clamping on that flange and getting ready to tack it on and then grind it. And then that'll have that part done. So as he was mentioning earlier, this covering down here, um, he rounded the corners, it looks really good. Ed's was square, he built it out of tubing, but this one's round, thin sheet metal, and uh, it just looks very clean. So now that he's got that done, puts the body back on, checks it all again. It's funny because I wasn't actually here for most of this. Um, the car progressed so fast, so we're lucky we got as many videos from this as we could. So at this point, he's just checking it out. Looking at the white walls on it, and then decided to go ahead and swap those on, get the actual tires on. These wheels will end up getting repainted at um, a later date. So once he painted the Godzilla engine, this red and the engine red matched didn't exactly match, I mean. Um, so I ended up repainting those later, which you'll see. But this is kind of giving you the idea of the final look. The Godzilla engine really fit really nice in this. Um, very surprisingly, because it seems like a very big engine compared to a little car. Uh, but it, it really did work well. So at this point, it was time for that to start working on the frame. Um, this is just a square two frame, all custom. Basically, he just took it and cut it up until it looked like the frame that he wanted. So what he's getting ready to do, if you notice in the, the last video, is he was working on the side rails, the ones that go from the front of the body of the firewall to the front where the grill shell will be um, and where the front cross member is. But what he's doing here is slicing down the square tubing so that way he can wedge it. So as you can see in this video, if you look closely, one end is narrower than the other end. So giving it some shape and then he goes back through, tacks it and then welds it all back up, makes it one piece again and then grinds it down. So um, you can see here where it's narrower at one end than the other. So one of the uh, nice parts about this, being that it's custom frame, he wasn't working with any other parameters, he wasn't working with um, 
any restrictions that a friend that he may have purchased or the Essex Rails or anything like that. This is all, you know, he saw it, created it, but um, I don't know if you guys caught earlier in the video, you might have heard him say that the, the regular rails would have been very narrow in the car. These actually are able to go all the way out to the sides of the body. Um, yeah, so getting the frame wrapped up, which you'll see here in just a second after a quick texting break. Just text. All right, and that is a wrap on this video for the Iski Tribute car. Um, sorry, they're a little delayed. Life happens, it's been really busy, but they'll be a lot more consistent. The next video coming out is a very in-depth video about the grill shell, how he made that, how he pieced it together out of two grill shells, very cool video. So that'll be what's out next uh, for the Iski Tribute car. Uh, if you guys wanna see the parts that were used uh, from Speedway Motors. There are links below that were specifically used in this video, like the ladder bar kit and uh, the, the shocks, the coilovers, a couple other things like that. So links below to that. Huge thank you to Iski Cams for letting us be a part of this build. Huge thank you to Speedway Motors for being a great partner. Holly, really good companies that helped make this possible. So anyways, more to come. Thanks for watching. And as always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.